everybody. So tonight we're going to be talking about your deepest fear. <laughs> Even if that statement caught your attention, it still may, may not be the most enjoyable topic for tonight. And for this meeting. I really thank you guys all for coming tonight um, as a group of psychologists, as a group of people who really are studying the ability of the brain and its associated communication with the body to modify your organ system. Um, you guys have been, you know, you just graduated, you're a group of students, you're learning a lot of science, you're learning a lot of theories and models, and what I am here to present today is a little bit more about the pain, is the modulation inside of the brain and nervous system and the pain in the brain. You see, what reconciles pain, what makes pain breakable, is that even in the deepest pain and even in the deepest wound, we often find a way of solace. You see, a gift and a wound are two doorways, two sides to the same doorway. The inability to experience your pain, the inability to fully experience the gift or even the wound in it, that's what underlies all dis-ease and pain, all suffering. All departure from that feeling that is truly you, all departure from that feeling that is truly trying to get your attention. So what am I doing here today, a chiropractor, talking to you guys about this? Well. I want you to know that our spine and our nervous system is what allows us to regulate deeply embedded ways of being human, including these five things, which I call the five gifts of the deepest five. That's our ability to function, our regulation and expression of emotion, our knowing sense of self, modulating behavior and new behavior with changes and choices, and lastly, as a conductor of consciousness. Why should we care? What if I were to tell you that most of our pain comes from our disconnection and our inability to regulate those previously stayed behaviors? Better yet, what if this came with a deal, an assurance, a science, a model, and a modality that allows you to have the fullest expression and connection with those above things through the application of your spine being released of its tension caused by the everyday stresses of life? What I'm going to do today is I'm going to dive into these five gifts that our spines modulate. And as I do, remember that these aren't just good ideas, these are realities, ways of operating, ways that we can experience as a common experience through a healthy spine. And a healthy spine is possible. I see it every day, that's what I'm working with, every day. Spines that are in the midst of pain, looking for the gift. So, we're gonna start first with function. Function, that's your life force energy. That's your nervous system, your connective tissue. It's you really searching for the survival and the safety of your body. Not everything that's living can heal itself. Not everything can heal itself. But what is missing? What's missing is the communication. You know, you have... Um, A figure that is not getting the adequate amount of information that it needs, the adequate amount of nerve reception or blood flow that it needs, what's going to happen to the end of that finger? It's eventually going to die. The tissues in it are going to die. If you start to poke it to try to bring life to it after it's dead, is that going to heal? No. The intelligence that's been moving from the brain to that place, very specifically to reach and hype it, isn't going to have that capacity. So what would we do in the meantime? That's the function of the nervous system. That's the function of the brain and of the body. Um, this is what we call the bioenergetic intelligence. It's all about the biochemistry that's animating our ability to function at any time that exists. That's regulated through the spine. If there is any deterrence, if there is any miscommunication on the way from the brain to the end receptor, to the end organ of the body, we're going to have a breakup. We're going to have pain. This pain can be modulated through chiropractic. Emotion. A lot of times people talk about their emotions at the end of a 10 minute story. They're still feeling the pain and they have this expression of anger that lasts 50 minutes. Guess what? Emotion only lasts a few seconds 
anything beyond that, that's a story, that's a gift of the mind, that's something that's way out of the actual motion. How is emotion regulated through the spine? Well, how do you think all the hormones, how do you think all the neuropeptides and ligaments get from the brain to every cell that may be encountering awareness? As I begin to touch this, as I have um, interactions with other people, my body is communicating through my eyes, through my nose, the sense of smell, through what I can hear, what I can taste. All of those messages are being sent through the rest of my body, through nerves, through hormones, back to my brain to give it the message of emotion that's regulating all three of my spinal cord. Um, and again, if there isn't any um, intelligence that's being animated on this emotional level, what are we going to have? Disoriented systems that can't fully respond to life as around it. Not only are you not going to have the connection with the pain, but you're also not going to have the connection with the awareness. And this is all being regulated through the nervous system. Um, emotion radically and instantly changes behavior. It's connecting to our frontal cortex and it's allowing us to really see the way um, the world is. Moving on, sense of self. So how is our sense of self modulated in our spinal cord? Well, what is one of the functions of the spinal cord? One of the functions that's happening in our spinal cord is its adaptation, not only in our bones and our ligaments and our muscles and our tendons, but also through the nerves within it to allow us to have a sense or a perception of what's going on around us, what's allowing us to stand on the ground, what's allowing us to know who we are, what is right, what is wrong, what is this and what is that? That is all happening through our brain and through our nervous system. When I touch this, I know that it's cold. When I know, if I touch something that might be hot, and I know that it's hot, that's giving me an idea, a sense of being in this world around me. That's all happening, again, through my nervous system. It's allowing me to know who I am in comparison to the things that are not me, giving me my own sense of being here. Um, and that is, again, being modulated in my spine. It is the stress being brought into my head that's being held in my body, in my cord. If I'm angry, how am I going to hold myself? If I'm joyful, how am I going to hold myself? All of these things are the ability of our body to adapt to different positions and for different times. If I'm scared or I'm walking in front of my kids, how am I going to do this? I'm trying to conserve energy. I'm trying to depress the energy so that I am more in this state that I'm in. If I have more energy to give and more freedom to give, I'm going to also be holding an expression within my spine, within my musculature, to ground who I am and where I'm at. That's our sense of self. If I can't regulate that, if I'm stuck in one position, this becomes my sense of self. Great for survival but not great for evolution. Moving on, conscious behavior. Our spinal cord, our nerve system, it gives us the ability to observe the world, to observe the map of the world. Um, so this is kind of what we call um, the upper mind in a way. This is um, what's going to give us, like I said, our map of the world, and really our set of rules to get there. When we, um, through sensory motor strategies, through the things that we learn over our life, we begin to develop patterns. We begin to know and to develop conclusions of what's possible for us. Um, if you think about a baseball player who is committed to their game every day, not only are they practicing the rules of the game, not only are they really developing what they need to make it all happen, but they're able to look out at the field and determine what's the best play in that moment. That comes from a large amount of things that are all being modulated through the intelligence of the body. If that batter in a split second believes that it's the best to actually just bunt the ball and to make a quick steal or a quick run to first base, that are those are all decisions that are going to have to happen through a very adaptable nervous system through very conscious behavior. 
that's really giving us the adaptability of the body. And mostly through the upper mind to get what it needs. Um, and you know, that takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of freed energy. Is somebody in a fight or flight response going to be able to take um, all of the information that it's getting in one second and know what it needs to do in that second to make it happen. That's the difference between somebody being in an energy poor state and an energy rich state that can adapt to all the information it's taking on and become more conscious and aware. If the body is in a low state of fight or flight, is that really going to happen or does the body need to be able to process the best possible decision there being some place of peace and ease for it to make that decision and then jump into the gear to do what it needs to do to make it happen. And lastly, consciousness. I know I'm blowing through these, but I'm really just giving you guys the overview of this. So how does this body regulate consciousness? Well, you think of some words here. Um, being in an awakened state, it's really, this is what people talk about when they talk about nirvana. It's becoming a nobody and an incomplete. It gives you the ability to observe, to observe the observer observer. This is where you experience joy, gratitude, compassion, oneness. This is consciousness. You want to be more aware. You want to have a new emotional range. You want to make healthier choices, and you want to shift other people's consciousness. How is this happening through the nervous system? This is the nervous system that has that has emotional awareness, that has a sense of self that is making conscious behavior. This leads to a higher consciousness, a higher conscious system. And this doesn't happen automatically. This happens when all of these outer gifts are not in their cave, but they're in their gift. And the body is able to respond, the body is able to give more free energy because it has more free energy moving through its system. As its function is being regulated, its emotion is being expressed, its sense of self is known to the point that not only is it surviving, but it knows what it needs to do to make the best choices for its life. So, are you ready to make new choices? Are you ready to have improved function? Are you ready to expand the emotional choices you can make? And are you ready for a quality of life that goes beyond the basics and allows you to have the life that you've always dreamed? All of this happens in network spinal analysis care, the form of chiropractic that's evolved. It's not going to allow you to allow your old life to hold you back. So I impress upon you guys to all set up a consultation to start here. Your life will be the greatest expression of who you want to be when you get older. Where's your focus? Do you just want to restore? Do you just want to get everything to its balance? Or do you want to reorganize everything that's possible in your spine to modulate the life you want it to? What are your health and wellness goals? Do you want to optimize it? Do you just want to get the pain quick under the rug? Because when you do that, is that pain really only going to intensify your pain? Or would you like to see the gift of it? Because that's the difference. You know, this is really a message about yourself. Um, in network spinal analysis, what we have here is um, a gift of what we call reorganizational healing. And it offers every single person an outlet to achieve the outcomes that they want for their whole life. The outcomes of optimizing, the outcomes of the greatest amount of um, joy and the greatest amount of alignment to that which is congruent to them all through their spine. I invite you guys to make a consultation with me, an appointment with me. Let me take a look at your spine. What is the state of your life in? What is the state of your spine in? What we say is that the tone, tension, position, and shape of your spine reflects the tone, tension, shape, and position of your life and vice versa. So if I can take a look at that, I can let you know where are these the greatest wounds and the greatest pain in your life and how can you move them through your skin? And like I said, this is a science. This is chiropractic. Through your spine, you can see where all of that tension is being held. You can see where the spine, where the neural structures are not in integrity. We use x-rays, we use SEMGs, we use quality of life indicators and measurements and tests to show us where the greatest stresses have had the biggest effect on your body. 
and will be able to release those pain stresses to become the peace force. I'll be right outside the door. Um, when you guys are exiting, we can chat for a bit. We can set up appointments. We can answer any questions you might have. Thank you again so much for coming. We appreciate your time. And hope to see you in just a second. Goodbye.